Hello everyone! Welcome to another somewhat new vision novel. This one's called Adventure of a Lifetime, and it's by Moy Novel. Well, it's actually by Poltop under the title Sword to Omega Forever Kanta. So, this title came out last year by Poltop, and it surely became available in English by Moy Novel. And it's one of Poltop's first all ages title, in contrast to if Our High Wings, The Sky Full of Stars, Kokoro Function, Pearson Garden, and Love Comedy Original, the other five games that I have on this channel. And like some of the other Poltop titles, this title is supposedly where we as a main character help one of the main girls achieve their dreams. So If My Heart and Wings dealt with flight, the Sky Full of Stars dealt with Astronomy, Pearson Garden, Went to the Future, and I'm pretty sure based on the VNDB.org description, this one deals with going underwater. And because it's an all-ages title, I'm hoping that the translation from Moy Novel was more or less on the dot. Well, I don't really know because I haven't played the original version. And I just went through a little bit of this version. So in a sense, I'm kind of discovering things as I play along. So without further delay, let's just go ahead and click start. So this vision novel is about the length of the um, Love Kami spin-offs from Moi novel. So Love Kami Divinity Stage, Love Kami Useless Goddess, and Love Kami Healing Harem. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to play through the entire vision novel top to down in one go, in one set. So anyways, let's begin. So it's true that I grew up in the middle of a totally unremarkable commuter town. So when people ask me that, it's the ocean that springs into mind. Interesting. And even now I can see the endless blue expanse stretching out as far as I can see. My mind is right there in those beautiful, clear waters. So what does he see? Oh, so someone near the bottom. So even down here, light from the surface still reaches me. So in a sense, he's kind of underwater, but not really deep down. And it's to the point where enough sunlight will still shine through the ocean surface. And the sparkling rays of the sun illuminates the oddworldly scenery. So quiet, so peaceful. Pretty nice though. And even as the fish swim by, it feels like I'm drifting through the sky. Ooh. But then I start swimming after her. So her as in the fishes, Hey, wait up, Chisa. So we're now looking from the perspective of our main character, which we don't know his name yet. And as I struggle to keep up, Chisa turns to me. She says while making a teasing gesture. So he's like, hurry up, um, I'm gonna leave you behind if you don't catch up with me. And I can't help but wonder how she swims like this. Well then again, she has to understand that maybe the main character can't swim as fast as she can. Maybe she's more fit, she's more streamlined to fight the um, ocean currents versus our main character. So it's like watching a sea creature in the wild, she's so at home in the water. Well, I've never been a swimmer myself, so I can only try to catch up. Or keep up. So why would I even consider the bottom of the sea as my home too? So it's like a well, 
she's more of a fit to the sea than I am, so I shouldn't like uh, worry if um, she shows off, because I can I acknowledge that I'm not as great as her. And to be honest, I don't really get it myself. Well, I guess my memories of the sea are just more vivid than anything else on land. I'll probably never experience anything like it in my life again. There's something my grandpa always used to say. Life is an adventure. That's true. The fact that, um, well, your life is short, you should try to enjoy it to the best of your ability. Try to visit places because um, you probably won't be able to have another chance at seeing it, it again. It was an attitude that suddenly took him away to a tropical island. Hmm, my grandpa really loved the ocean. And as I watched the bubbles float away from me, I noticed the sun's rays filter down through the water. The ocean floor looks pretty, but that beauty has a cruel edge to it. Humans didn't evolve to survive in that kind of environment. That's true. The fact that um, humans were built to live on land and not in the waters. And maybe that's why it's easy to feel lonely when you're at the bottom. But then again, if you see the sea creatures as your friends or neighbors, maybe that will help reduce that lon loneliness. So just what would happen if I were left down here all alone? Oh, so it looks like um, the person that is a fast swimmer is helping our main character. Lucky for me, I'm not alone. I have a buddy, the girl tugging insistently on my arm. There you go. Even years after journeying through that deep blue, I can still remember how her touch always kept me calm. So it seems like, well, I'm a fast swimmer, but I don't want to leave him behind. I want him to see all the wonderful things that I am seeing. So that might explain why. Why when I see the ocean, I feel like I've come home. Okay, so it looks like we're on surface. So just that moment before dawn, where the sky gradually lightens. The ship was cutting through the gentle waves, sailing further into the Pacific. Unable to sleep, I left my second class cabin and its rock hard mattress behind to take a walk. Well, maybe that mattress is like an incentive to get him out of his cabin because it's too uncomfortable to, to sleep on. Sure, it's nice and cool this time of the day. Oh, so our main character's name is Hiroki. And the smell of that salty air brought back all kinds of memories of summer's past. It would be another six hours until the boat arrived at the island. Well, six hours wasn't a lot compared to the four years I've been away, but with nothing to do, I was really bored. And feeling restless, I went, I went upon to the deck. Hmm, so it looks like someone else is here. I didn't think I'd run to any other passengers at this hour. It's like, oh, it's morning, everyone's supposed to be sleeping. But for some reason, I see... So for some reason, I see this person standing on the deck. So I'm... Um... It was a girl looking out toward the horizon. The sea breeze was blowing her hair around. Her hair was pale blonde, but it looked natural from what I could see of her face. She didn't look Japanese. But she was really pretty though. A beautiful girl silhouette against all the colors of the pre-dawn sky was like something out of a movie. And the only thing that fell out of place were her clothes. So I wonder why. Hmm. So I wonder why 
and she wore a school uniform. Those sailor style uniforms were common in the city and she looked about my age, so she was probably in high school. Wait a minute. Could she be a foreign exchange student all the way out here? Well, I just couldn't figure it out. And now, while he was making all these thoughts about her, she noticed that he was right next to her, staring at her. So the girl finally seemed to notice me. So I wonder what she's gonna say next. Um, ha hello. And she doesn't pay attention. She ignored me and turned away. Maybe I should just have let her left her alone. So he tells her, Ah, well, maybe you can't understand me. Should I try another language? I don't know how to say good morning, though. So why don't you say good morning, then? The girl said in flaws Japanese. So I think it's like, well, when you try to mention like, well, I don't know how to say hi in their language, it kind of insulted her to like, come. Um, oh, so you think I don't know Japanese, right? Well, guess what? I do. Sound irritated. Well, I'm pretty sure everyone would if um, that was how you were treated. It must be annoying when someone assumes you don't speak their language just because of your appearance. That's true. It's like, oh, well, she's blonde. Maybe she's a foreigner, so um, I'll just assume that she doesn't know Japanese very well, so I'll try to use Japanese to talk to her. Even though she does know, it's like, oh, well, even though I'm blonde, that doesn't mean I'm not Japanese. I'm part Japanese. And he does recognize that, well, that was pretty rude. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. And I think it's like, oh, well... I've come across this quite a lot, so I'm kind of used to it. She went back to gazing out across the water. Her expression is a little sad. So the boat we were on was a ferry service. It was taking us to the Ogasawara Islands from Tokyo. And it would take 24 hours. So the passengers were mostly tourists, people traveling for pleasure. Well, I guess that included me as well. But this girl is different. And I wonder why. So she didn't look like she was here for fun. So I wonder, what brings you here to Ogasawara? No response. Well, I guess she doesn't want to talk. But I'm nothing if not persistent. Alright, so he tells her, okay, so I'm just going to Gosawar to visit my grandma. It's been four years since I've seen her last. And once again, no response. There you go. Oh, so um, you've ever been diving scuba, I mean? You know, I'm with the tanks and stuff? You can even try. There are places around here you can go even if you're not licensed. And the atmosphere just seemed to get more awkward the more I spoke. So I think it's like a well, it's probably like she doesn't want to talk to anyone right now. She just wants peace and quiet. And the fact that the main character is trying to bring us some topics for discussion, it only serves to irritate slash annoy her. And just as I was starting to regret seeing anything in the first place, I finally got a response. I mean so, a very cold reply. I hate the ocean. And I wonder why. So yeah, why would you come here then, if you don't like the ocean? I blurred out without thinking, if you didn't like the ocean, then Ogasawara was not the place for you. So I wonder how she's going to explain that. So the blonde girl fell silent again, deep in thought. And as it was on cue, a sudden noise rang out, snapping her out of her reverie. 
Okay, so um, her phone's ringing. And they go, well, that person again. Oh, come on, stop bothering me. And with one last disgusted look at the device that dared to disrupt her quiet thoughts, she raised her hand above her head. So what's she gonna do with that call? And then swung her arm forward. Hey, hey, hey! And her phone flew from her hand out into the sea. Ooh, so she threw her whole cell phone to the ocean. Wow. A big waste of money. And it was kind of sad that um the person who was trying to call this blonde person. Well, I think he was just checking in on her and that's gonna be pretty rude that she's gonna permanently ignore him or that person. Whatever. So the piercing ringtone became more and more distant before it vanished completely. Hey, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> Okay. No, that's not the point. The ocean's not your trash can. Okay, so Hiroki's like, well, if you throw a cell phone into the ocean, that's littering. And she didn't notice that. She probably wasn't expecting me to call her out on littering. Come on, think about the damage that you'll do to the environment. Um, the fact that you have lithium, that's chemicals, maybe... I think you used to have some lead, that's also pretty bad, tin, and some other um, metals that are very harmful to the ocean. And it's like, oh, think about all the wildlife that's going to choke on all those toxic chemicals that they use to build your phone. Oh man, now we're too far away to get it back. So I leaned over the handle as far as I could, but there was no choice of getting the phone back. But then again, I'm pretty sure like, if you lean your hands over the handrail, there's no way that your hand will be able to touch the ocean. Because I'm pretty sure for most ships, the deck is at least one story from the surface of the sea. So even if the phone was right next to the ship, it would still be nearly impossible to reach it. And I'm pretty sure the um the ship crew won't allow that either so after an uncomfortable silence she grumbled the complaint but I'm pretty sure that does not that doesn't explain why she hates the ocean the fact that I'm she threw the phone into the ocean well I guess she just needed to let off some steam Um, you know, the ocean is pretty much all there is in Gasawara. So he's telling her, like, well, if you don't like the ocean, then it's going to be really hard for you to fit in Gasawara. Because, like, we're basically an ocean-friendly town. Everything is all about the ocean. It's like a small island. So what does she do on the boat she doesn't like the sea? And then I guess the wind blew towards us. So brushing her long blonde hair out of the face, the girl spoke again. Okay, so she does have a purpose of coming here. So after that she said no more. She just stared out at the sky as dawn turned into day. I could tell she wanted to be alone so I decided to head back to my cabin. So before leaving the deck, I took one last look at this enigmatic girl. And I'm pretty sure she would be happy if he left her alone for good. Hmm. So a journey to get back something precious lost at sea. It sounded like a silly reason for a trip, but there was something in her expression that told me she was dead serious. So maybe that lost item has... Tremendous 
sentimental value for her, and that's why she wants it back. It means a lot to her. So even as I walked back to my cabin, I couldn't wipe that girl's serious face from my mind. But anyways, I mean, it's best to leave her alone for now. Okay, so this is our title screen. Kind of like what we saw in If I Heart at Wings. With that um, paper airplane, or I think it's the glider instead. Okay, so it looks like um the boat has arrived and it docked at the Futami port on Chichijima, the transport hub for Agasawara. Alright, we're finally here. So I slipped off the boat, glad to have my feet on solid ground again. Oh, the port was packed with tourists just arriving and our locals coming to welcome them. I glanced over at the crowd of people standing what, with what looked like hotel signs in their hands. But then again, I kind of feel like these um, people are trying to um, prey on the um, tourists that are just arriving to Agasawara and like a, yeah, advertising, um, persuading them to stay at their place and basically making or doing business with them. Oh, come and stay at our place, I've eaten at our place, it's good. Um, You'll experience good memories while you're on this island. And I don't think um that's a good thing. Oh, so someone was supposed to be meeting me here. A no-show, huh? Oh well. Well, it's not like this was my first time here. I already knew where to go. And as I was walking down a familiar road, a crowd of people came forward to question the ferry passengers. Oh, so there are also, also some people there, like um, they were, they made arrangements to meet up with someone else. And that's why they have signs, like um, oh, I'm looking for this person. Okay, that makes more sense, that's more reasonable. So from what I can make out, they were looking for someone, not just to take them to their hotel. There you go. So I wonder what's going on. Well, it's none of my business, really, or so I thought. And that's when he, I caught sight of a girl hiding in the shadows, doing her best to sneak away unnoticed. I'm pretty sure we know who this person is. Okay. Hey, um, aren't you, um... So it was the girl in the sailor uniform I seen on the deck early this morning. There you go. So I wonder if, um, this guy is looking for... her. Okay. So one older man fought through the crowd and made his way toward us. So the blonde girl behind me flinched reflexively. Wait, so um, is the older man looking for um, Hiroki instead? So go, wait, aren't you the grandson? Oh, uh, uh, hello, um, oh yes, um, hi, um, how are you? I used to see this guy around all the time back when I visited the islands more often. Okay, so I was like, well, I do know you, um... Yeah, the last time I saw you, you were like a little boy. Wait, it's good to see you again. So what's going on here? 
Oh, so like, um. Okay, so I think the older man is looking for, um, that other person. It's like, uh, well, someone gave us a missing person's report. Uh, well, um. Well, she's actually behind me. But I couldn't bring myself to rat her out. Cause I'm pretty sure, um, that girl is expecting that Hiroki is going to lie to the old man like him. I didn't see her. Um, or like, no, she went over there. Or, um, maybe at most, like, well, I don't even know. I have never heard about that person. I don't know who she is, etc. But they go, well, since she's behind me, I'm pretty sure they're going to spot her. And he does. So apparently, um, Hiroku, or is it Hiroki or something? It's like, um, he is not really big enough to be like a good shield f for, um, her. And just like that, she was caught. Oh, so it's Hiroki. Oh, I'm her, um, this is, uh, you see, um, so I wonder how he's gonna talk his way out of handing her over to the old guy. Okay, so she calls him Onichan, or Big Bro. Huh? Wait, what's going on? So, it's making Hiroki feel confused. And once again, she's like, um, Hey, big brother! Um, right, 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 um, of course, um, yeah, okay, so this is my younger sister. Sure, the weather's nice today, right? So she wants the main character to play along with her, it's like, um, hey, we're siblings. So, make it look that way. There you go. So our eyes and hair are completely different colors. It's like, um, well, it's gonna be really hard to convince people that we are siblings, based on how we look. And we don't look the least bit alike. But it seems like, um, the old man bought it. It's like, um, oh, well, I didn't know that you had a sister. Yeah, this is the first time I've brought her to Ogasawara. She was looking forward to certification so much, even... She even dyed her hair. Yeah, such a brat, ha ha ha. I'm pretty sure um, the blonde girl does not like that kind of comment. The fact that, um, well, um, she dyed her hair blonde. It does remind me of that main character from Hagana and Have Many Friends, Kuroko Asegawa, where um, his blonde hair, it was a really troublesome feature for him. It makes him look like a delinquent. Or like a bad student. And in a sense it made it really hard for him to have any friends. And it was one of the big elements of that story. Well you can go see about that if you really are interested. Well, so the man's eyes were born into me now. Well, um, you know, we better get going. Lots to do today. Okay, come on sis. So I grabbed her hand and led her away as fast as I could without looking suspicious. But then again, he's already looking suspicious because he didn't give the older man time to um, ask more questions and finish up the conversation. So he goes, oh, um, I have something else to do, so I'll see you later. And I appreciate sure he's like, wait, 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 come back here. Um, I have some more things to ask about you and that blonde haired girl. Ha, 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 okay, okay, I think this is far enough. Okay, so he got away from that older man who was probably ready to ask more questions and maybe gave a little chase to stop them. So from the port, we headed along Amura Beach before turning to Ogamiyama Park. And once again, he notices... Oh, so he notices that she's holding on to him. Uh, okay, um, sorry. 
So I realized I was still holding her hand. She blushed, rubbing her wrist gently. Okay, so she's happy that um he was able to save her from that older man. And I think she mind about all those um really silly comments about her like um oh she dyed her hair blonde. Okay, so he introduces himself to her. It's like um so my name is Hiroki Mizuno at your service. Here you are. So I am Emily Shirase. Um, you can call me Emily. So what met this morning, right? On the deck of the ferry? Okay, so I don't think she realized at first that um, it was the same person that was trying to talk to her while she was looking out at the, s the horizon. Or of the sunrise. So it seemed like she finally rem remembered me. Maybe she was too busy trying to get away to nose. I can only wonder what she was running from. All alone and still in her school uniform. Stanley took a plastic bottle out from her bag and gulped down some juice. Hmm. She only worked at that sweat during our escape. I soon realized I was just as tired. Well, too bad there weren't any vending machines nearby. Oh well. Okay, so you want to sit then? Huh? Wait. Well, it's just the thanks for um, helping me. Oh, um, yeah, thanks. So I took the plastic bottle and stared at it for a moment. I wonder what he's thinking about. Well, I wasn't used to sharing drinks with someone, but I guess that it must not be a big deal wherever she was from. It's like, a, well, if I do drink from her bottle, it's kind of like giving an indirect kiss, and that might be questionable. But then again, when I first met Emily, she did bring up the fact that she is Japanese. Well, part Japanese to be exact. Well, if this was just a girl from my class, I probably wouldn't freak out so much, but she was so beautiful. And do best, my best to look casual, I took a few sips. It's like, oh, well, I don't want to ruin the um, moment. Um, if I do deny the sip, in, it might just make more questions for her. It was a little orange juice, but right then it felt like the best thing I've ever tasted. I was probably thirstier than I realized. Okay. Well, don't worry, it was nothing. Nothing special in particular. Well, all I did was I just grabbed her hand and run after all. Okay, so back at the Omur Beach, there's a little spot called the Machiko's Cafe. And my grandma runs it and she's really a good cook. So um, just come, back some come by sometime if you like. Okay. Suddenly flashed me a bright smile before turning away. Well, thank you very much, Hiroki. And she looked back at me one last time before waving and quickly walking away. So I watched her until she was out of sight. Hmm. She really looks nice when she smiles. Well, compared to when I saw her on the deck, on the verge of tears, I thought the smiling face suited her better. Okay, so with that little adventure concluded, I headed back to the Futami port. So what was up with her anyways? I hope she wasn't still or something. She left the boat at the same time as the rest of us, so probably not. She didn't look like she would cause trouble either. By still felt a nagging uncertainty, I had gotten so caught up in helping her, I wasn't sure if that was the right thing to do now. 
But then again, she didn't mention that, like, uh, well, some guy is looking for me or somebody filed a missing report on me, and if I get spotted, I'm going to be forced to be sent back to Japan or Tokyo, Japan, and I will not have this chance at finding that lost item. And I think maybe the people that filed the missing report, they don't believe in all those fantasies that come. Well, who cares? Um, I don't think that thing was lost, or if it was lost, you can never find it. So just forget about it and just move on. So I had thought about asking the people searching for her for more information, but they had already moved on. And I'm pretty sure um, going to them at this time is not appropriate, because I'm pretty sure if you did ask the people about more information, I'm pretty sure they're going to suspect that um, Hiroki has an idea of where she went. Because like, well, now that they moved on, it's like, well, if she escaped from the um, Futami port, then we're just going to have to look all over the island for her. So the port had been so busy before, but now it was almost deserted with only a few tourists milling about with cameras. And I wonder when this ferry is going to depart again and head back to Tokyo. So apart from the tourists was a girl standing alone, looking bored. So I wonder who else is here. She was around the same age as me, with a tan and long black hair tied in a ponytail. Hmm, so could that be her? Is this the person... Oh, so it might be the person that I'm supposed to meet here. I wasn't sure, so I tried to get a little closer. Wait, is it her? Is it really her? Mm, I can't really tell. So it's been four years since I've seen her. And people do change. I've grown more than seven inches. I probably looked different in other ways as well. Uh, excuse me? Okay, so she answers. Okay, so the girl's ponytail bounced as she turned to face me with a blank expression. Oh, great. Wrong person after all. So, well, maybe you're not... So, wait, you're not the person that I'm supposed to meet. Um, you don't look like that person. So, staying next to her this closely, it was obvious that she was different from the person I was looking for. It's like, well, you look like that person I was supposed to meet, but you're not that person. So I was looking for a tomboy, not a cute young lady. But then again, we've seen how um, tomboys can develop and look like a cute young lady. Like Ageha. And... Well, that's a post-op example. But we've also seen the same with Itsuki and Strawberry Knots. Oh, I'm sorry. My mistake. I tried to laugh off the mistake, but just then, a cry of distress rang out behind us. Ah! Oh no! What, so what's wrong? Maybe this is the person that Hiroki is supposed to meet. So a woman had dropped her camera in the sea while trying to take a photo of that ferry setting sail. Okay, so it looks like the ferry is about to depart. Oh no, my camera! That's no way to start a vacation, huh? Wait, what is she doing? So without another word, the girl beside me started taking off her clothes. And I'm actually surprised that she's wearing a swimsuit underneath her clothes. It was like, a, well, I'm always prepared to go in the waters at any moment. So I'm on call to um, go dive in the waters. Interesting. They go, wait, what the? So she didn't stop at her jacket, she slipped out of her shorts as well, her skin glowing under the sun. I made a real effort to not to stare, but this wasn't something you would see every day. That's true. Wait, what the hell are you doing? Out of public, no less? So to my surprise, she wasn't wearing a regular swim underwear, but a bikini swimsuit. There you go, Psycho. So. It's a surprise that she's wearing a swimsuit underneath her clothes as if she was ready to go into the water at any minute. Well, I'll be right back. So shoving her clothes into my hands, the girl with a tan and ponytail kicked off 
Persinos and ran into the water. Hey, where are you going? Um, I'm gonna go get that camera. So by the water's edge, the woman paced back and forth, worried about her camera. The girl casually ran past her. And with a jump, she dove right in to the waters. Wow. Wait, wait, what? She dove off. I was so shocked and confused, I found myself staring down to the sea alongside the woman who lost her camera. Sigum, this is incredible. And, um, I wonder if the tourist is able to keep her composure. Well, I'm feeling that she will be. She was always reckless, so I guess that hasn't changed. So how does he know? I said mumbling my thoughts out loud. Now I knew it had to be her. So after a few minutes, a hand holding a camera shot out of the water. To go, so yeah, this is the person I'm supposed to meet. I know her very well. And I'm pretty sure only she would do this kind of crazy stunt. So um, the girl popped out of the water, fall by her head. <laughs> I found it. Don't worry. It shows the camera. So the woman stared in sight amazement. But the sidewalk was pretty high above the water surface, so the girl couldn't climb back up. Maybe this is where the main character has to help her out. Or maybe, um, she has to go swim and find a place where she can easily climb up onto the surface. Okay, so he helps her. Grab my hand! I reach out toward the girl who stared blankly just for a second before shaking her head. It's like, um, well, no thanks. I don't wonder why. I'm okay. I did as she asked, a bit confused, then with a mighty splash, the girl leapt right out of the water. Oh, so is she going to dive, make a big jump from the water, and then land perfectly on the dock? Okay, so she's continuing to shock the tourist. Whoa, whoa, whoa what? A large animal several times her size leapt from the water with her. Wow, so um, a sea creature just pushed her out of the water. A dolphin. So the girl used the boost from the dolphin to help her jump. And I wonder if she's going to make a safe landing. Oh, so she does. So a moment later, she's back on the shore. There you go. Safe and sound. So meanwhile, the, the dolphin dove back below the waves, sending water everywhere. I wonder if that's true or not. Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, I wanted to um, give you some fun. The dolphin poked its head up and gave a squeak that sounded a lot like laughing. Oh. Enough of your jokes for today. Oh, so he finally talks to her. It's like, um, nice to see you haven't changed too much, Chisa. Wait, I know my name. You look different, but so I didn't recognize you at first, but you're the only one girl I know crazy enough to dive into the sea like that. And she now recognizes them. Oh, so this guy, you must be Hiroki. So we stared at one another for a moment longer as the flood memories finally helped us recognize each other. This was without a doubt my childhood friend, Chisa Ugasawara, come to welcome me back. Oh, but first I have to get back the camera. She gave the camera back to the tourist who was still stunned, barely able to believe what she just seen. I hope it's in good shape. Condition. 
Um, it's okay. It's waterproof. Uh, it should be able to withstand a um, like light spray or like a little bit of water. And it looks like she recognizes who this person is, like um, the dolphin girl. Yeah, yeah, um, that's me. So she said, "Give a forced smile." Oh, I didn't recognize you. You're on TV. And basically, like you're like this trainer person, kind of like um, you see in you go to Sea World. Oh yeah, this person's Finn. And I think the problem is like, um, that's me. I wasn't sure if Finn was responding to his name or not, but he allowed a series of friendly squeaks. So the woman started taking pictures of Finn on her phone and recently recovered camera. So it's like a, it's proof that the camera still works fine. So Chise, so Chise smiled weaverly or warily and left the tourist to her photography. Well, anyways, um, it's good to see you again, Chisa. So now they recognize each other. Except for the fact that Chisa's kind of upset that I'm, well, I had to wait for you this long, I was getting bored and the such. So I'm gonna go ahead and start here for episode 1, and we're gonna see how their reunion continues through. And I'm pretty sure Hiroki has a pretty bit of explanation that he has to tell her about what just happened, the fact that um, he had to deal with another female who was trying to run away from this older man, and the older man was looking for this Emily for some reason. I'm pretty sure it's more like someone found a missing report on her and this older man is trying to find Emily and send her back to Tokyo to fulfill that or solve that missing person's request. But with that in mind, I'll see you in the next episode.